How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video we'll be taking a look at my own personal team selection for Game Week 25 as well as taking a look at Double Game Week 24 and seeing how my squad got on and whether or not that triple captaincy chip paid dividend and we managed to get a green arrow so stay tuned for that one. But otherwise let's get into the video. Thank you to One Football for sponsoring this video. Link down below if you do want to use my download link to download this wonderful app. Thanks again for sponsoring the video. If you don't know, One Football is the everything football related app. It's free to download on iOS or Android, and you can see there on the table. I'm following the Premier League right now. Gives me all the goals, assists, and whatever I need to know, as well as following my favorite team if I do want to follow a team, which is, for me, Liverpool, but for you, it could be anyone else. Also, if you want to track more leagues than just the Premier League, go and check out this app. As I said, link down below. So as you can see on screen here, we have the Double Gaming 24 Team of the Week. Three Liverpool players, which would probably be quite customary. Starting in goal, Henderson. I don't think there's going to be many upset managers who own Henderson. Having played against Man City to come out with 11 points is absolutely superb. If you don't know, got that penalty save against Gabriel Jesus, uh, which proved to be quite profitable in those FPL points. The rest of the defense, Lejeune, Pereira, Alexander-Arnold, and Steven Stevens. I know a lot of people kind of brought him in prior to this game week, so that's a really nice transfer in. Alexander-Arnold, we all expected him to do well. Congratulations to those of you who managed to triple captain him. I don't think that's going to be too much disappointment there. And then Pereira, I know a lot of transfers out for him. A little bit unlucky there. Leicester managed to concede, but Pereira is still ending on 12 points thanks to an assist and a goal from the Leicester fullback, which looks quite good. The rest of the midfield, probably a surprise player of the double game week, Jordan Henderson, finishing with 16 points. They tied with Mo Salah and quite a lot cheaper. So if you took Henderson as a mega differential punt, that looks quite good. And then Mo Salah, as you know, we had him in our squads. Perez with 15 points, a player that I have a love-hate relationship with. Uh, after transferring him out, he's done quite well, so all credit to him. And then Redmond and Delhi Ali. So Delhi Ali, we did transfer him out this game week, but it was for the likes of Mo Salah. And that captaincy did shift to Mo Salah, so that could have been uh, quite a nice move there. But Delhi Ali still looks quite a good player there for Spurs. They have a little bit of some tough fixtures coming up, but I do think that Delhi Ali still should be getting some FPL points in the future. And then Chris Wood, who's been on quite good form there for Burnley, uh, picking up a lovely 12 points. Not many managers do own him, so maybe a differential we could be looking at. But let's get on and see how my squad did in game week 24. So on screen there, 82 points above the average of 53, but that should be an expectation. As you can see, we did use the triple captaincy chip, and it saw us rise in rank to about that 60k mark, currently 63,000, which basically halved our rank. Uh, quite happy with that. Uh, glad we're back in that top 100k as we push on towards that top 10k, hopefully by the end of the season. But I was really happy that the triple captaincy managed to pay off, and let's get on to how the rest of the squad did do. So Guaita in goal there uh, with just the two points. Uh, quite disappointing since I did own him. However, Crystal Palace do have some very nice fixtures still coming up. So I'm hoping that he does perform well. I kind of went odds on here and I went for that Crystal Palace double up in defense. And yet again, it did not pay off. Kelly finishing with just one point. Alexander Arnold, the standout from the defense with 12 points, a clean sheet and an assist. Uh, last night, they did play that game against West Ham. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these managers and owners, even triple captainers, will be quite happy after that own goal attempt came off the crossbar or the woodwork. Um, I don't know exactly which crossbar did come off or if it was the side post. But... 12 points managed to get uh, from that assist and a clean sheet and quite happy with his performance. Sionku with two points. Uh, yet again, Leicester showing um, some defensive instability. Uh, quite worrying as a Sionku owner. I know a lot of managers have jumped off that whole bandwagon and that's the reason why a lot of people transferred out Pereira. But I'm just hoping that Leicester can kind of regain some form. I don't think it's going to be too soon as the likes of Chelsea and Man City are on the horizon for Sionku. So I don't see many clean sheets in that one. He might be a transfer out that we could be looking at. Going into the rest of the midfield, I started with the Bruyne with seven points. Uh, not too disappointed with that one. Sheffield United, always a tough fixture to go by and I was never going to captain a Man City player if I did have a double game week for Liverpool. Grealish with two points, disappointing. As I usually do say, he's the main talisman for Aston Villa. So if they score, he's probably going to be on the receiving end of, of an assist or a goal. 
and uh, they scored two and he was on the end of nothing so uh, quite disappointed with him but he did have a good display midweek in that league cup semi-final so i'm still going to be holding him for the foreseeable future and then traore with five points i don't think that five points reflects how well he did play he 100 percent is that main attacking player for wolves I just worry about if he plays against sides that are going to sit back. I don't think he's going to be given the freedom he was given against Liverpool as Liverpool play quite a high line. Um, but Traore is still doing quite well. He's attacking threat and his final third finishing has become a lot better since last season. So I definitely would recommend looking at him, especially at his price bracket. Going on to the rest of the attack, we have Vardy and Connolly, both with one point. I don't think you'd be expecting that much from Connolly, um, but Vardy, I was expecting a little bit more from him, but unfortunately, he did not perform. Going on to the, probably the most popular picks for this game week, Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. So Sadio Mane finished with one point, highly unlucky for those of you who captain him and even more triple captain him. So Sadio Mane came off about that 40 minute mark with a slight hamstring strain. It turned out to be a small tear, so he's going to be missing the Southampton game, but we'll talk about that in the team selection. But with Sadio Mane, just finished with the one point. Mo Salah though, finished with a lovely 16 points. My kind of bracket for a triple captain is I always want them to get 15 points or above. Uh, the more or closer you get to that 50 point mark, the better. Unfortunately, we didn't hit that 50 point mark, but I'm still really happy with Mo Salah. And I definitely would have taken it after that first game against Wolves when both of these players did not perform that well. Uh, if you did watch the game, there were a couple of chances where Mo Salah could have just got that extra goal. And I feel like if he got one more goal, this would have been a major success. So I'm still hinging on a success here from the triple captaincy, but I do think that there could be better options later on. So I think uh, it's going to take till the end of the season till we can really say if this triple captaincy was a good one. But otherwise, I'm really happy with that green arrow. And let's get on to the team selection ahead of game week 25. So I'm starting with Guaita and Kelly here against Sheffield United. I'm just basically hoping for a nil-nil in this one. I do think that Lundstrom's position is a little bit under questioned here. Uh, he did not start the last Premier League game and he didn't even start that FA Cup game. And his replacement ended up scoring in that FA Cup uh, game for them. So I'm thinking that Lundstrom might be on the bench for this one, which is going to be quite disappointing uh, as it's kind of losing our FPL Lord uh, from our starting 11s. I reckon a lot of people are going to be dropping him if he does not start again. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about Lundstrom, but I'm just hoping maybe he starts in this one. Uh, Kelly and Guaita do have a potential for a clean sheet here but Sheffield United have been quite good on the attacking end uh, so I'm just holding thumbs on this one uh, Alexander Arnold against Southampton Southampton have been playing really well recently I'm hoping that it's not going to be another Leicester game uh, where they end up dominating but I do think Liverpool at home uh, should be too strong for, for Southampton I'm kind of banking on Alexander Arnold to get an attacking return here as I am playing Danny Ings as well Sionku against Chelsea a really tough fixture there's a home one so maybe more of a cagey affair. I know that Chelsea usually do well against the better opposition. So just hoping Sionku could get something in this one. Uh, but I'm not holding my thumbs too tightly. Then we have De Bruyne against Spurs. I do think that uh, Man City will beat Spurs in this one. And I think De Bruyne should be on the receiving end of, of some good returns. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he does get forward and not sits back. I know against the Spurs, Spurs will probably look to counter-attack which might see De Bruyne uh, be quite deep, or it might invite him to uh, go forward a lot more. So I'm just hoping for the latter. And then we have Grealish against Bournemouth, who's my outside punt to do well this week. So if you want to take a really massive differential punt, I think that you could even captain Grealish this week. Uh, Bournemouth have been quite atrocious. I know recently in their last game, they did do quite well. But I do think uh, Aston Villa, who are really hungry in these games, uh, really want to get out of that relegation scrap as they have been winning a couple games on the trot. I do think Grealish it might be an outside differential captaincy punt. So if you down the ranks and you really want to boost up, I think you could consider it. I'm just hoping for some returns from him as he has been doing quite well recently. Traore against Man United. This game could be a hit or miss in my opinion. United could always pitch up or they can kind of slack. I think that Wolves have been playing quite well and with Wolves' record against the top six sides, I do think Traore can do quite well. Uh, the rest of the midfield is just going to be Mo Salah against Southampton. He's probably going to be my captain as he's the outstanding fixture in my opinion. I think De Bruyne could also do well, but uh, I'm always going to be captaining a player from a lesser opposition than a top six side. So Salah looks to be on my radar, should be starting. I uh, played quite well against West Ham, so I'm just hoping for the best there. And then Danny Ings against Liverpool. I'm playing him because I am benching Sadio Mane uh, currently. So Ings comes on, can have the potential to score, has been on quite a good scoring record. I might switch that out for Connolly if I think Connolly is going to start instead. 
uh, as I do think that that Liverpool away fixture is probably the toughest fixture that you can have in the Premier League at the current moment. Then we have Vardy against Chelsea. I'm just kind of banking on his history here against the top six sides. He uh, usually does love a goal against them, so hoping that he can get some form back at Leicester's home ground. On the bench, we have Connolly and Rico. I just don't think Rico is going to be keeping a clean sheet here, so Connolly will probably be my preferred option. You just have to worry about his starting position, especially because the likes of Trossard didn't even start last week, and I think Trossard's playing a lot better than Connolly, so I don't think Connolly's going to be starting many ones. And then I've got Sadio Mane on the bench, but we'll talk about him on our transfer options now. So as you can see on screen here, we have our transfer options. Uh, the transfer I'm leaning towards this week is kind of banking a transfer. Um, the only other transfer I might consider is maybe downgrading Sionku to the likes of Lachelle's if I don't think uh, Leicester are going to be keeping many clean sheets in the future. Leicester do have some nice fixtures coming up, but if you look at uh, Newcastle's fixtures, yeah, they have some very nice fixtures coming up. And I do think uh, on the current form they're under, they can keep a couple clean sheets there. Lachelle's also comes in at quite cheap, a uh, 4.2 million. But as I said, I'm kind of leaning towards not making a transfer here. Uh, just kind of resting Sadio Mane for one game week. I know I have a lot of money in him, but uh, after he comes back, there is a two-week break after Southampton. So he should be ready to go for that Norwich fixture. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be playing that as they do have a Champions League game uh, quite shortly after. So I don't think Jurgen Klopp's going to want him rusty. So I think you'll kind of agree with me here that Norwich is a very good attacking fixture for a side like Liverpool. And I do think Sadio Mane can do quite well in that one. Uh, if I did transfer out Sadio Mane, it could be for the likes of Hume Son. It could also be for the likes of someone cheaper, maybe James Madison or Anthony Martial. And then that money could give us uh, an upgrade to Aguero or Aubameyang. But the transfer that's probably a little bit more realistic is just upgrading one of my cheaper defenders, the likes of Kelly or Rico, to Van Dijk or Robertson. Leaning a little bit more towards Van Dijk. At the current moment, Robertson's not playing too well. And I do think Van Dijk always offers that attacking threat from those set pieces. So comes in a little bit cheaper, so it could be a little bit more affordable for most people. And I do think Van Dijk is probably more of a realistic transfer than the likes of Aguero or Bamiyang, as I would have to probably transfer out Vardy. But stay tuned to my Twitter for the confirmed transfers. I always confirm my transfers over on Twitter. And otherwise, just stay tuned to the deadline stream. Hopefully, I'll be doing a deadline stream this game week before Game Week 25 uh, over on my Twitter page. Deadline with Davies as we usually do one hour before the deadline. But otherwise, this is probably going to wrap up the video. Really happy that the triple captaincy chip managed to pay off and we got a nice green arrow there. So if you did follow my kind of uh, thoughts on that uh, triple captaincy on Mo Salah, congratulations. If you did it on Sadio Mane, commiserations. Uh, but I don't think you can be too mad at that decision. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. Please like it if you did. And subscribe if you're new or have not subscribed yet. I'm going to be signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.